Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday, everyone. I hope you are having a fantastic holiday weekend as we pull in so close to Christmas. It's almost upon us. I'm not sure what traditions you have for New Year's Eve or how those plants might look a little bit different this year, but one of the things I love to do with our kitties on Christmas Eve is go to noradsanta.org. And through that, if you have any kiddos in your house or maybe your cats or your puppies want to know too where Santa is in the sky it will actually tell you what country he's flying over and what city he's landing in and let you know when your kids need to get to bed so that they will be asleep before he arrives but that leads us into we're gonna have a little bit of a fun life talk this morning about Santa the history of Santa and some of the different Santas that have been all around the world and throughout time there have been many 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 different depictions of Santa. Some of them look very, very much different than the Santa Claus that we think of today in, the, in our current modern age. And um, so last year, if you want to look back at the life talk that we did, we had some fun with our Christmas broadcast then because we talked about how does Santa get all around the world and to deliver all of those toys in one night. And in that little bit of a dive of knowledge, we talked about the many different dates that people celebrate Christmas. Some areas celebrate their Christmas, including receiving gifts on December 5th or December 12th or all the way up into January 5th. So if you want to track that and see that uh, the way all of that flows around the world and get a little bit deeper into some of the other holidays and festivities that some of these places have, you might want to watch our last year's Christmas talk. We had a lot of fun with that one. But today I, it got me thinking a little bit as I was reading an article, I was, um, probably a little too much information. I was waiting in a very long line in the car at the vet and had a Santa magazine next to me, so I read the cats a story about Santa. And in this article, it really sparked me thinking about how we could bring this into a life talk. In the article, it talked about a news anchor named Aisha Harris, who had asked her father when she was a very young girl if Santa was truly white or if he maybe looked like her or what Santa actually looked like. And this father seemed very wise, I felt, in his answer because he told her that Santa's magic makes it so that whenever he pops into anybody's house, he takes on the likeness of the family whose house he's in. And he's magical that way. He is everyone and everything. Truly the magic of the story of Santa is about generosity and kindness and the ways that we can give and share that lovingness. And so I thought that was a really wise answer. But that sent her on a quest when she got older. And just a few years ago, you may have heard about the huge controversy that got stirred up as she suggested maybe we change the depiction of Santa to look like an animal. And then that could be friendly for all different races and cultures and people all around the world. And there were some people that were in a huge uproar because they felt like Santa has always been as we see it today. But that is actually not quite true with the history that we have. The Santa that we have today, the jolly old man with the white beard and the red coat and the very friendly, wholesome image, actually came from Coca-Cola advertising that started in 1931. Before that, there were so many different types of depictions of Santa. Some of them were of a, a very tall, gaunt man. Some of them were a spooky little elf. Some of the images were a Norse huntsman where he was wearing animal clothing and would uh, be out in the woods. And then the old Father Christmas, of course, that has his magical cane and um, his wise look. There are some Father Christmases that you see wearing a bishop's robe and holding his staff. There are so many depictions of Santa that we've had over the years. And it seems now we have this one image. I was looking up pictures of Santa Claus in Afghanistan in Japan and Iran and different areas and I was very surprised to see a lot of our current modern day image of Santa in all of these different areas and so as I was 
delving into a little bit of research for this, um, and I found that out about 1931, um, coming from Coca-Cola. I want to take us back a little bit further. First, in 1862, there was a Civil War cartoonist named Thomas Nast, and he drew Santa for Harper's Weekly as a small elf-like creature who supported the Union troops. Um, he continued drawing this depiction of Santa every year and changed the color of his coat over time from tan to the red that it is now thought of frequently today. Although in some cultures it is green or blue or silver, but that's where we got some of that uh, image of the red that we see so much today. And Coca-Cola then depicted Santa in holiday ads um, starting in 1920 but it used to be this very strict looking Santa Claus until Fred Meisen painted a, a bright and cheerful one drinking a Coca-Cola in St. Louis in 1930. That ad appeared in the uh, Saturday Evening Post. And then in 1931, that ad was so popular and that bit, it was a gigantic mural that they painted in Missouri and it became, started to become really, really popular. People started to get excited and Coca-Cola the next year, 1931, had um, Archie Lee of Darcy Advertising Agency commission a Michigan-born illustrator named Haddon Sundblom to develop a wholesome, jolly, realistic, but um, also symbolic looking Santa which is the popular image that we have today. Sunbaum created original works of the Santa Claus and the Coca-Cola images from 1931 all the way until 1964 when he did his last original. Before Santa, uh, before this image, as I mentioned, Santa had so many variations around the world and in some areas there's still a lot of variation depending on where you look. Even though as I looked up images, I saw so much of the Americanized Santa everywhere. One of these other images though, or one of these other um, people, I should say, not just images, was St. Nicholas. And I love, love, love the story of St. Nicholas. He was a real person who was a bishop in Myra in Asia Minor, which currently is modern day Turkey. And he was born around the year 280 he died around 63 years old, although we're not exactly, we don't have exact proof of his dates, but pretty close to that. And he did so many good deeds in his community, but he was very, most famous for his help with this very, very poor family. It was a father who had three daughters. And in that time, if you didn't have a dowry, if the father couldn't provide the dowry for his daughters, then they were most likely going to grow older and be impoverished and have a very despairing life because they couldn't get married. And so this wonderful St. Nicholas really felt for these daughters and this father, the whole family. And so what he started to do, because he knew they couldn't afford the dowry, as each daughter came of age, he left a bag of gold coins on the window under the cover of night. Some say that this legend was that he dropped it down the chimney and it landed in a stocking or a shoe. We're not sure exactly which, but there's a lot of evidence that he did this with the gold coins and the dowry for all three girls as they came of age. Thus began the tradition, tradition of the stocking by the chimney. There's a... Um, there's a second uh, version of Santa Claus called Dead, Mor Dead Morose, or Grandfather Frost is another name for this one. He was very popular in Russia and in the Slavic countries, and he's assisted, some of the Santas around the world have assistants. Some of them are good, and some of them are you really don't want to have to come in contact with. But uh, Dead Morose has an assistant, which is actually his daughter or granddaughter, the Snow Maiden, which they call the Snegorucha, um, as, and they will give out gifts on New Year's Eve instead of Christmas Eve. But it's the same concept. And the third one that I wanted to mention was an old English version of Father Christmas. He used to love to drink and to feast in the 17 and 1800s, and uh, recently they've 
started bringing into the story that he seemed to join the gift-giving crew of Santa's. But um, his story reminds me a lot of if you watch the the movie where they talk about taking you back in time and you watch the Christmas back in time and you see your present day and your future, that big jovial drinking one that takes you back to the past and he wears the wreath and all of that, that was this uh, Father Christmas. And uh, the fourth one that I'm going to mention actually leads the door to several others that I would encourage you to look into if you haven't heard of female Santa Clauses. I, as I was reaching, I found, researching, I found there were seven different female Santas in different areas, which I love. So um, the one that I'm going to mention tonight is La Bafana. I hope I'm saying that right. And uh, she was the Santa in Italy, and I love her story. Um, she visits children on Epiphany, so January 5th is when she gives out gifts. And um, her version of the story was that there, she was very proud of her house, and she took very good care of her house and kept it nice and clean. And one evening, the three wise men were traveling through town on their way to give their gifts to Jesus. And they went um, to her house and asked if they could stay, and she let them stay for the night. And they invited her if she wanted to come join them and uh, go ahead and follow to give the gifts to Jesus. And she said, no, no, I've got a little more housework to do. I really don't have time time for that. And uh, then the ne after she was a l had gotten forward a little bit more that next day after they'd left, she realized she really regretted that decision and she wished that she had joined them. So she set off looking for them but didn't really know which direction they went. So she never found them. But what she decided to do was that same concept for many other families. So she started giving sweets and toys to children and families and just spreading that love and that joy around. So if you want to look up more information about some of the female Santas, I think it's nice to know that there's a little bit of equality in this world, even where the Santas are concerned, which brings us really into your own life and your own traditions this year and every year. This is the time and the season where we really dig deep into ourselves and into our hearts and into our souls to find the light that we have within ourselves and to share that light with others. Think about how you can find ways to give back to those that you know and to strangers as well. It might be that you're just in a fast food line and you decide to pay for the person ahead of you or behind you. Simple random acts of kindness can make somebody's day really a wonderful day and sparkle and you never know how far that kindness will stretch. When you give someone a random act of kindness they may pass it on to someone else and to someone else and it really helps make this whole world a better place. So I hope you can take some examples of the different versions of Santa and maybe think about how you can bring that into your own life to be maybe a bit of a Santa Claus yourself. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas season, everybody. It's coming up so quick. Have a wonderful Christmas Eve, a great Christmas day, and uh, just remember that the love and the hope are the true points of this season. It's not about the gifts. It's not about any of those aspects. It's really about the love, the compassion, and the kindness that we all share with each other. Have a great week, everyone. We'll see you next Sunday. Thank you.